Hey, deserved listeners, Darcy and Stacy, let's watch. It's hard because I feel like after the, the Michael thing and us trying to be in a better place in our relationship, I just don't really know how to approach it with Georgie because I don't want to start a fight. When you paid for the deep sea fishing and then this, I mean, I know these boat rentals aren't cheap and I know it's hard right now for you. Just a little worried about the money you're spending. Okay, totally fine. Thus far, totally fine. I don't know if you need to do this on camera, but in this moment, but that's fine that, you know, we're not talking about money and socks. We're just, she's saying, I'm a little concerned about money and let's talk about it. Totally great. Let's see how they proceed. No, it's hard right now for you. How much does it cost you? Put in my credit card. I mean, I can help pay for this if you want. It's okay, I already pay. Okay, again, it's going okay. He's saying, I put out my credit card. It's a bit of a funny thing if they, well, they're, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. They're not, they're not engaged, right? But they're talking, or at least she is, that their finances are overlapping. So, okay. And he's saying, I put out my credit card. And she's saying, well, you know, I could have, I could have paid for it so that I'm guessing what she's saying is so you didn't have to go into debt and then pay interest on it. So conversation, you know, they almost never have a conversation like this on the show. I, I think it's going pretty well so far. It could turn ugly given what we've seen before. But we've never seen this conversation between the two of them <laughs> from the beginning. She could have said, I saw money in a sock in your drawer. What's going on there? Um, you know, I don't know what that means. The, what... I noticed that you're not working very much. Uh, let's talk about that because I, I want I want to be with someone that has ambition and actually is, you know, uh, productive in a way. So you know, absolutely have that conversation in this tone, sure. But uh, riling up your friend who verbally abuses and threatens your boyfriend because he put money in a sock is abuse. It's not about paying money, it's about paying right. memories, you know? And I love that. I feel like, you know, the deep sea fishing in this is really helps, you know, us and the kids all bond and... Don't worry about it, you know? When I start working, I'll pay my credit. Yeah, but you have to have a plan of action. And, I do have a plan. You know, bills add up. Yeah, I do have a plan. Okay, so he's saying he does have a plan. All right, so if you're Darcy, which I don't think she's dealing well right now, I think she is starting to undifferentiate because of the tension. She could say, okay, what's the plan? Um, let's work together on that. So let's see how they manage. Other oil and other products, beneficial for your skin, for your health, organic stuff. I'm working some partners in Bulgaria in the next couple of months. I'm gonna make the products, I'm gonna make some profit. I'm working hard to get this business in motion. The Bulgarian rose oil, you have big potential to sell to the United States. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know the viability of that business model, but uh, given that you're on a TV show, I'm guessing that gives you a lot of exposure to get businesses off the ground like Darcy. So now if you're Darcy and you're like, well, the rose oil thing is great, but what if that doesn't work? And what are you doing? You know, what's the timeline here? Because I, I'm, I'd like to know because I, I don't want to get into another situation like I was with my previous partner. I put a lot of work and research and conversations and meetings with the Bulgarian uh, manufacturing. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight and even take years. So we're going to continue working on this to put everything together uh, to sell it to the right market. I understand that. Okay, so Darcy seems to be holding it together. And... You, I, you could say, if you're Darcy, I love that. I, I, I think I stand behind that. You stand behind me in my business. I'm going to stand behind you on your business. But years, because if it takes years, that's going to give me a lot of anxiety. So is there something else you can do in the meantime that you know is not the ultimate goal? But Because uh, I can't imagine that this is going to take 40 hours a week or, or the next um, you know number of years. Now, if you're Georgie, you could be like, look, back off. It's my career, and we're not even engaged. 
So why are you making me do this sort of thing? And he would absolutely be okay to say that. They're not married. They don't have kids together. They're not engaged. And so she doesn't have any, even if they were married, you don't have a right to be someone else's career counselor. Now, Darcy could say at any point from the beginning, and I don't think she ever has, because I think we would have heard it if it did happen. She could say, I am not paying for anything. I'm not buying you clothes. I'm not paying for your apartment. You are on your own money-wise. I don't want to pay for you. Uh, it's just my boundary. She could say that at any point. And if that's how she feels about it, if she feels bad about the fact that she keeps supporting him in all these ways, she can say, I don't want to do it, particularly now because they're not engaged. So it wouldn't be unusual for that to happen. And I'm guessing that Georgie would go, well, bummer, but okay. I, I was fine on my own before I met you. I'll, I'll manage. I'll figure out a way. So it, she has that option. But I feel like, and I guess maybe this is the big issue throughout all this, is that she is insecure to the point where she doesn't feel like she can actually assert that because she's worried he's going to reject her or disapprove or something. And she has been raised in a way that doesn't allow her to be able to feel confident to stand her ground or to assert herself in that way. And so she forces herself to support him and to give in while resenting it the whole time, but is unaware of the fact that she's doing it to herself and thus applies the resentment to him instead of realizing, oh, it's really me that I resent. I resent me for not drawing more of a boundary. I see that you're being proactive and that makes me feel rest assured that you're able to help financially at some point in time in the near future. I just want us to be transparent and honest with each other about money. It's a tough topic to have in a relationship, but it... Okay, so she's doing good. Uh, she could have a different policy. She could be like, I don't want to... But she just said right there, and this is my guess as to what was always going on behind the scenes, was... She would say, I'm full, totally supportive of that. The rose oil thing, totally cool. Or it's a pandemic and you're having a hard time getting your massage therapy you know, career. I'm totally fine with that. And you know, I support you. What do you. Would you like to go shopping and buy a fur coat? I, I'm guessing that because that's just how it seemed to me. But then come around the corner and he's being blasted for mooching off of her by Stacy, by her friends, by Michael instead of and for him he's like i don't see the problem darcy and i have had conversations about this and it it i never got the impression like she was upset at me about this so i don't know why i'm being yelled at by other people this is classic triangulation right so when darcy says i support that does she really support that because if she really does then great but i'm guessing she doesn't really i'm guessing there's a part of her that is insecure about how it looks to society about being used in that way about it not being a real relationship because it's not, you're not on equal footing, you know, whatever it is that's going on inside of her. I'm guessing that's there, but in this moment, we're not seeing that. Needs to be discussed. The other thing I'll say is if you Google why do people get uh, divorced, often I think the most common cited reasons are money and sex, I think is what it is, but money is up there. And I've always found that to be silly as a reason. In my experience, people do not get divorced because of money. They get divorced because of the way they talk about money. Because if you just read the tagline, it just seems like there are these incompatibilities regarding money, like in this situation. He, according to some people, is a, a mooch and lacks a solid, viable career path, while she is constantly scrap, you know, working hard to finance things and hustle here and hustle there. So you would look at that and if they divorced, you'd be like, oh yeah, well they divorced, be you know, if they were fighting about money. Well, they divorced because he was a deadbeat and she was constantly supporting him. But that's not the way I would frame it. The way I'd frame it is 
all the things that I talk about otherwise, which is the ability to know yourself, the ability to assert yourself, the ability to listen to someone else, the ability to take someone else's perspective and communicate around that, communicate about your needs, be upfront, have uh, a way of talking about those things. In my book, that really applies to any topic, whether it's sex or money or childcare, parenting, uh, where you're going to live, those those are the topics of discussion, but it's the way in which we talk to each other that's influenced by our relational traumas and our attachment styles that really drive the conflict that results in people divorcing. Not the top, Not it's not like money causes people to divorce, it's the way you talk about it. I'm glad that you are going to be able to sit down and map that out, plan it out, because I want us to raise the, you know, raise the bar together. I hope okay. I okay, enjoyed this vacation. It's for us to enjoy this time together like a family. Yeah. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. And I think that she's this far away, meaning that as soon as someone comes along and suggests that he's a mooch and that he's using her, it'll completely throw her off her game and she'll go back to the insecure and yelling space that she's been in before. So in this moment, uh, because I don't think she really knows who she is or really knows what she wants. I can't know that for sure. But she doesn't seem to have a solid base of like, this is who I am and this is what I want. Here, you know, I present that to you. What are you going to do with it? She seems to just kind of go with what's happening around her. Highly influenceable, I guess, is the thing. And so, although we see this right now, which is a resolution, will it stick? I guess time will tell. I want to see him truly succeed in the things that he desires. And I want to be able to support him with that dream that he has. But I'm a little nervous because I feel like starting a company, it's hard work, you know? And he's not going to be able to make money right away. But I just have to trust what he says for now and hope it all works out. So if that's her stance, totally fine. I don't think that's her stance, though. It certainly wasn't in the past. So I wish someone were there to say, are you sure that you're cool with this? Because you weren't, this means you're gonna be paying for everything for years. According to his model, you will be paying for him for years, buying all of his stuff, paying for everything. And when people start to ask questions about that, you're gonna to have to be confident in saying, well, I am i don't know if things are gonna work out. And the other thing that I would present to her is, most businesses do not turn a profit or very much of a profit. On average, most business ventures are not successful because that's just the way the market works. And the chance that his business is going to be profitable is, you know, it's, it, it's a roll of the dice. Uh, even if you do everything perfectly, the market could be funny or there could be a, a recession in the future or the um, you know, the, the manufacturing chain could get out of whack or a competitor could come out with something that is marketed better and completely outsells you. You could uh, be sued, like the, especially something like that, because I think it's a supplement that he's, that he's offering. It could harm someone. You, they could sue you out of existence. You know, it's, there's a lot of risk there. It's not one of those, if I had a partner that had a business idea like that, I'd be like, well, I mean, great, but I'm not going to start spending all my money on the idea that uh, I'm, we're going to see this huge stream. The other thing is, is it could take 10, 15 years to turn a profit enough, right? You could maybe earn some revenue, but you got to dump it back into the business for a few years. It's, it's not uncommon. So it does Dar is Darcy okay with that? If she is, great. I don't think she is. So... Does she have another way of talking about this and noticing what her needs are and saying, well, honey, I'm really glad that you're doing that, but I kind of want to see something else. I want to see option, you know, a backup plan that you that is much more likely to work that you're doing along the way. If you don't want to do that, that's fine with me because you can do what you want, but I'm not going to support you. I will support you if I see, you know, real evidence of you actually doing things. Plus, if you are productive in another way over the next few years, then I won't have to support you and I won't have to go to bed at night worrying that you're using me, which is a sensitivity of mine, which we all know. <laughs> like she could say that. Why isn't she saying that? And and I think it's it's just that 
insecurity. She worries about rejection. She has a really hard time holding on to her thoughts and her needs. And then when they boil over, that's when the explosion happens. Why don't you ladies go to the hotel and take shower and get ready? Because I have other plans for today. I'll text you the address and the information where to come. Well, let's, you guys All right, let's, let's hurry. We'll go get ready and get dolled up. So I'm worried about two. Well, I'm, <laughs> there's two possibilities. One is, is that it's going to be extravagant and more credit card and Darcy's going to explode or he's going to propose again. <laughs> and I, I don't know how I feel about that at this point. This this is exactly what I wanted to have four of us create memories like a family. And also, it's very important for me to build the relationship between me, Aniko, and Aspen, because I want for them to be part for my second surprise. So this is why I hate beaches. Everyone's always like, beaches are great. I love beaches. And it, uh, this is a little OCPD of me, which, you know, listen to my deep dive on that. <laughs> But I found out from someone else that had OCPD, they're just like, yeah, I hate beaches. I was like, oh, is that a OCPD thing? But anyway, so uh, I hate beaches. I, I grew up with a lot of beaches. You know, there's beaches here in Seattle. You go to L.A., there's beaches. And it was growing up, it was especially in the 80s, you know, to think of Top Gun in the beach scene, beach volleyball scene, you know, everything was always about beaches. It's always the beach, Be you know, in the eighties, you, you would wear shirts that just said like the beach, <laughs> you know, ocean Pacific OP was the big brand growing up. It was all about surfing and being at the beach. And then you go to the beach and it's freaking windy by definition because of the different temperatures of water and land throughout the day. So, it's a constant just billow of wind, you know, which can be really great under some circumstances, but when you just want to chill and relax and have a dinner with t utensils and p plates, like it's a disaster. And then the sand, you know, listen to uh, Anakin Skywalker about sand getting everywhere. It does get everywhere. And then the mist off the sea, like creates a cake in your hair with the sand and it's, you know, algae and, now, I love the water. I love the ocean. I, I grew up in the water. I grew up swimming all the time. Like when you're in it and you're doing the thing, then it's great. But when you're just trying to have a thing, like it's like it's like convertibles, cars. You know, I hate to be like <laughs> a bummer for party people for everything. But, you know, being in, in Seattle, no one has a convertible car. And so when I went to Hawaii years ago, I rented a car and I rented a convertible. I'm like, we're in Hawaii, let's rent a convertible. It's miserable because you're in the, you're just in this sun, it's just like beating down on you. And then the wind, back to the wind, you can't have a conversation, you can't listen to music, it's the wind, you're just, uh, uh. now it's, you know, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I thought convertibles, it's, you know, it's what you always want. Maybe this is Seattle people just like, fetishizing and wishing that they lived in warm weather where you could actually do these things. And when I actually went, I was like, this sucks. I'd rather be inside. <laughs> I'd rather have a car with a top. I rented this convertible. I had the top up pretty much the whole time. Now there were times like at night when you could drive slowly and see the stars, maybe pull over, you know, totally great. But it's, I don't know. It's, I feel like I was tricked growing up is my point. We have champagne, we have strawberry, we have cheese. And we have beautiful ring. Yep, so he's gonna propose. And the first time I thought, great, maybe this time it'll work for Darcy and I can be happy for Darcy. And Georgie seems to not be anything like Tom or Jesse, maybe this will work this time. And then they got engaged and Darcy proceeded to treat Georgie in a, at least from the edit that we see in an extremely unfair way, uh, doing things to him that she would never allow him to do to her. You know, talking to exes, for example, um, not being in his corner, not defending him, not 
being caring towards him, being abusive towards him, getting all of her friends against him, getting uh, you know, Michael against him, getting Stacy, you know, everyone's against him for putting money in a sock and for having his own credit card debt and for having trouble with his own employment. Again, if you have a problem with his employment, that's fine. You could be like, ah, I just, I, this is kind of a deal breaker. Have a conversation. But anyway, you get my point. So uh, now he's going to propose. Do I feel, how do I feel about this? <laughs> how do you feel? Let me know in the comments. How do you feel about this? How do I feel about it? I don't know. I feel like every time this happens, I, I have optimism. I'm like, well, maybe this time it'll work. Maybe this time it'll be fine and everything will be cool and, and Darcy will be different and her relationships will be different. Maybe this time. But why would I think that? <laughs> why, why in the world would I think that it'll be different this time? Why? Has she gone through some massive psychological transformation? No. So I feel bad about this. That's how I feel. I feel bad for everyone involved about this. All right, Mom. Yes, baby. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself and take care of others because we all deserve it. We really, really do.